Hello, my name is Thomas Beyet. I am a student at the University of Wollongong. I am doing the Master of Civil Engineering and today I am going to present to you my research on the topic of granular filters in large dams. First of all, I am going to talk about the embankment dams in which granular filters are used. We will uh, look at examples of dam failures uh, and uh, the different types of salts used in the dams. I will explain the internal erosion phenomenon that occurs in uh, embankment dams. And uh, we will look at the role of the granular filters towards uh, this phenomenon. Then uh, we will review the re literature on the subject with a focus on the criteria for the design of granular filters and on the geotextiles and their use in uh, filters. Finally, I will propose uh, to you my research design on the subject. <clears throat> First of all, embankment dams, uh, they represent about 80% of all the dams uh, constructed on Earth and um, they are the largest water retaining structures. Here you can see a couple of pictures with different angles for embankment dams. Um, on the first one we see the upstream face of the dam with uh, what we call riprap. Uh, they are basically very large um, particles, rocks. And the deeper we go in the, in the dam, in the structure, the finer the, these particles will get. On the other picture, um, it's uh, a side angle of an embankment dam, which gives you an idea of the cross section, which is detailed on this uh, picture. As you can see, embankment dams are structured uh, at like pyramids. Uh, here, the upstream uh, face with the riprap. Here, the downstream face, and in the center, the core of the structure. The filters are located near the toe of the downstream face of the dam. <clears throat> now let's have a look at common examples of dam failures. On the first picture, we can see uh, water seeping at about mid-slope of the downstream face of the dam. This is um, an accident that occurred on the Blackman Dam uh, in Tasmania and it occurred during the first fill of the reservoir so it shows that these uh, failures uh, due to seeping water through the structure can occur very quickly. The second picture is uh, very well known it is a picture of the failure of the Tenton Dam um, it occurred in 1976 in the US and um, it is a um, devastating uh, failure and uh, it is very unknown because the Teton Dam is the highest uh, dam to have ever failed and its failure was due to a phenomenon that is called the piping. Now let's have a look at the types of soils. Um, the types of soils that are used in the dams. Uh, the finest particles are called clay then we have silt and sand, um, more coarse soils are gravel, and then very coarse soils such as cobalt and balder. On this graph we can see different uh, particle size distributions for different types of soils. And uh, what is important, uh, we can see here that 15% uh, of um, the total mass of the soil type C corresponds to a particle size diameter of about 0.25 mm or less. This means that um, particles with a diameter uh, equal to or less than 0.25 mm will pass through a sieve of this size. And the, all of these particles correspond to 15%. It's the 15% finer particles of this soil. 
So D15 is a very important parameter, as you will see, uh, it um, comes up often in the design criteria for the granular filters. Now about the internal erosion phenomenon, um, as you can see on this picture, the water is uh, seeping through uh, the foundation of the structure and exits at the toe uh, of the dam. <clears throat> this internal erosion um, tends to uh, remove particles from the basal, which migrate and are washed away. And this leads to the removal of successive layers of soil in the uh, upstream direction. This is called the piping. Um, here we can see in this picture that then by applying a layer of granular filter above the base soil at the top of the dam, we, um, the, we avoid the migration of the base soil particles and uh, therefore avoid the piping and the failure of the dam. So the role of the granular filters more in details. Um, the first role is to protect the, the base soil from uh, migrating and being washed away under the influence of uh, the seepage uh, forces. Um, and this leads to the first criterion for the design of the granular filter which is called the soil retention criterion. The second main role of granular filters in dams is to allow the smooth passage of seeping water to avoid development of excessive pore water pressure in the base soil, so upstream of the, of the filter. And this is called the permeability criterion. Now let's have a look at the literature on the subject. Um, for the criteria um, for the design of the granular filters. Uh, it was first proposed in 1922 by Tezagi, who said that D15, which is the diameter, diameter corresponding to particles, uh, the finer particles of a soil, of 15% of these particles, D15 for the filter should be less than four times D85, so 85, percent of the finer particles of the base soil. That's the soil retention criterion. He also said that um, D15 of the filter should be four times bigger than D15 for the base soil. This is the permeability criterion. Now these criteria are still uh, very uh, commonly used in the construction of dams, even though they date of 1922. And uh, over the past century, lots of researchers have uh, conducted studies to refine this um, criteria, which was uh, considered very conservative. Therefore, in 1978, the US Army, Army Corps of Engineers came up with a similar uh, criteria, but uh, they refined the the Terzaghi's conclusions. Therefore, they said that D15 for the filter should be less than five times D85 for the basal, that's the soil retention criteria. And they said uh, that the relationship between D15 of the filter and D15 of the basal, so the permeability criteria, should be included between 5 and 20. <clears throat> now, let's have a look at the literature on the geotextiles and their use in the filters. Geotextiles were first uh, defined in 1986 by Corner. He said that geotextiles are a permeable, permeable textile material, usually thin silic used with soil, rock, or any other geotechnical and engineering related uh, material to enhance the performance or cost of a human-made product, structure, or system. Now, these geotextiles can be used and 
can be effective as filters, as granular filters. And researchers such as Corner and uh, the iCode, um, which is an, an international conference on large dams, proposed in 1986 that the opening size um, of the geotextile filters, which will uh, only uh, lead to the passage of 5% of the particles of the base zone, this opening size should be less than, than the diameter of 80%, 85% of the finer particles of the base soil. That's the soil retention criterion applied to the geotextile filters. However, this criterion can only be applied with base soils that are co non-cohesive and that don't sustain a cra crack. With cohesive soils that can sus uh, sustain a crack, a continuous flow through this crack will be applied directly on the on the geotextile filter. Now it is said that the geotextile filter, their behavior under um, a concentrated um, leak is not well understood. Therefore, geotextile filters cannot be um, trusted um, because the, the criteria is not um, specific enough. This is the reason why I chose to focus my study on this particular aspect um, and I am looking at answering the following research, uh, research uh, question which is can the design of filters using geotextile materials with cohesive base soils that can sustain, sustain a crack be less conservative than using sand filters and can they provide a better cost performance re relationship? So I am planning on reali relying my research on the no erosion filter test, which was first proposed by Sherald and Dunigan in 1985. Now this, this test was uh, designed for a sand filter. However, I propose to replace this filter with a non-woven polypropylene, which is the most commonly used type of geotextile with an opening size less than D85 of the base soil, which respects the soil retention criteria. And by comparing the results of this test with the results from the no erosion, erosion filter test with an filter, we should be able to answer the above seeded uh, research question. Thank you for your attention. I hope you find interest in my research.